location at Kingdom Mountain and Darien Lake with Harold Rubens. Her uh, Harold is the sound engineer for Stephen Curtis Chapman, which will be on later tonight. But yeah, so thanks so much for taking some time to sure, be with man. us and to hang yeah. out and uh, just talk sound and um, just the whole process around front yeah. house engineering and mixing. But Absolutely. Yeah, so let's get into who you are a little bit. Let's talk about how long or when did you start your interest in sound? When did that all happen? Um, my, if you were to ask me for a bio, um, usually my opening line is, it all started at a Michael Jackson concert. <laughs> uh, I was, uh, uh, before that night, um, the idea of a sound person or sound or somebody that was in charge of the, thing, the way things sounded wasn't even on my radar. And I, I went to uh, 1984, I was at the Victory Tour in Houston at the Astrodome. And we were, you know, on the other side of the stage, you know, far back. And, and somehow that night, you know, the thing that caught my eye, you know, besides obviously the King of Pop being on, yeah. on the stage, but somewhere in the middle of all this crowd of people, there was this little island that would glow, you know, with yeah. lights. And I was like, what is going on down there? And, and it, it just drew me every night, you know, I, or that night. And I, I didn't know what it was, but, you know, after, at, the, at the end of the concert, you know, I went, I made my way down there and talked to engineers. And what, you know, what do you guys do? You know, all this stuff. And what do you control? And my dad kind of, oh, I think they do this, you know. And he said, well, you know, I mix, you know, I do all the sound, every, every channel is this. And he had, you know, two consoles and it was just, you know, great. You know, huh. I was like, wow, you know, for a little kid. But that, I, you know, it did, you know, just it put it on my radar. So all I know is that, you know, that was a Saturday, I think, a Friday or Saturday. So Sunday I go to church and all of a sudden I was like, oh, yeah, they have a sound person here. Yeah. And I would go to my youth group and there, there, there's Your a sound person. perspective's open now. Yeah. Well, it's like, oh, there's somebody that actually, you know, that is in control or at least making some adjustments for what, you know, those kind of things, you know. And, and so I did. I asked my youth leader, hey, so who does sound? Oh, so-and-so does it, you know. So I started helping out in hmm. youth, you know. And, and then, you know, it made sense. And I, you know, and, and I started doing that. And then, obviously, you know, the progressions, you get to help out in big church, you know. Yeah. And then eventually you work, work in big church. All right, so let's take a moment. Let's talk uh, for all the gearheads that are watching, yeah. the tech guys who are looking for the, the, the nuts and the bolts of what you're using. I see the sure. Yamaha shirt here, the CL Series. Uh, what are you, so what are you touring with? You have the opportunity to bring some of your own line in with you on yeah. this tour. So a lot of times artists, you got to show up in a venue, you got what you have and you got yeah. to make it work. Yeah. This is an opportunity for you to kind of pick and choose some of the pieces that you're able to bring in. Right. So let's talk about some of that. Let's, yeah. let's talk about your console, let's talk about your microphone choice, let's talk about some of your back line. Like, yep. What are some of the things that you're using well, on this tour? Um, some of the things that we uh, use, for example, I do use, um, I'm a fan of Yamaha consoles. Now, uh, and I'll say this, I, I've used them all. Yeah. And they're all great. Like, I think for a console, uh, for, man, for a manufacturer to, you know, appeal to a certain level of engineer, right? There's certain functions, certain sounds, certain quality that it needs to have. A certain set of tools that, you know, that allows you to work, right? Um, and it's just like you opening up your toolbox and you're going, oh, I know where my screwdriver is, I know where my hammer is right. and all those things. That's what a Yamaha console is to me. I'm so familiar with it, I don't have to think. Like, my reaction time from what I hear to making a change is very, like, oh, boom, I just Seamless, hit keystroke. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't think about where it is on the console. Whereas if I went right now to say like an Avid console or a, like a Midas console, you know, a couple of weeks, two, about a week and a half ago, it makes a show on a, on a Midas. Great show, great sound, it was great. But it was a lot more of, okay, uh, find it. Right, oh, Re there, okay. recalling, then, yeah. You know, and like, where is that function? Because I'm not thinking about, oh, there's an EQ, I need to adjust it. It's thinking, oh, oh, I need to, I need to take out a little 2K on that. Okay, uh, finding the EQ, where's that? Oh, this button, you know. So right. it's because I'm thinking of the function up here, not not here, right? So I'm like, how do I do it on different right. consoles? And so, so I, ch I do choose Yamaha consoles just basically because I think they sound great. I think that... Um, it's an extension of what I do. I'm so familiar with it. It's the back of my hand. I can fly on it. You know, I have it set up the way I want it. You know, things that I want done. You know, um, but yeah. So right now, currently, and since it's come out, I think, uh, I think we got we got our console about six months after the CL series came out, and now we're two and a half, three years later, and still same console. Never had an issue with it. Rock solid. So other than familiarity, mm -hmm. what is it about the Yamaha series, especially the CL series you're wearing right now? Like that, what is it about that you really love? Is there is there a specific feature about it that you just really love? Well, is it the interface? I, is the what is it? There's a lot of great things that it does. Um, the user surface is, is I think Yamaha has always had a really great user surface that I think a lot of people can just walk in and go, oh, you know, there's a there's you know, three three or four different ways to get to the same function. So depending on how you work. I yeah. set up, the, and, and they're so customizable that I can set up 
things to react the way I want it to react. Uh, user-defined buttons, uh, knobs that are user-assignable, um, ways to, to shortcut things on buttons, and the way you can set up remote la or uh, custom layers. So, you know, I can always adjust things. So you and I could be mixing the same thing, but you can set up your console right. the way. You know, there's a situation where I toured with the afters, and the first part of the tour, they had their engineer. So I was like, great, here's all the inputs, here's my stuff. Let me just set you up a custom layer. And then, and when he came up, you recall the custom layer, and they were, there. it was like his console right. when he was actually on my console, right? right. So, so there's a lot of those things. And there's a, man, the, a lot of the built-in, I think Yamaha, you know, has a, one of the most complete, when you pull up the desk and you go, boom, you plug it in, and the reverbs are phenomenal, the delays are great, the uh, onboard effects, the premium packs, which is like the Neve Portico, which nobody else has. I mean, come on, I mean, you're, you're, you're right. talking about Rupert Neve stuff on there that sounds, you know, amazing. LA2 is 1176. Uh, you've been now doing this for 20 something years. We've been talking about you've been on tour, multiple venues, you've seen multiple churches, you've seen multiple, you know, you've built your own system, you've yeah. worked with existing systems. What are some of the lessons you've learned kind of later on in your career, or later on in your path, that you wish you'd learned earlier that probably would have maybe changed, not changed your directory, but given you a little more insight, a little more wisdom younger, yeah. than earlier in your career? Yeah. Wow. Uh, you know, I think that there's a. Um, with anything, as you mature, right, um, as a person, as whether it's in life or in, in, in a career or anything like that, I think there's a common um, path that you take. And it's like, basically, you learn, you learn a few things, you get going, then you learn a bit more, and all of a sudden you get to the place where you think you know it all. Right. Right? Like, yeah. we all get there, right? Like, yeah. in some place, whatever we do, we get to a place where we Become know it professional. all. professional. Oh, we're like, hey, I, yeah. know, I know everything, yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah, I've yeah. learned it all. Like, I've been there, right? Like... Um, and then, you know, right on the other side of that, it's the fall. <laughs> it's where you realize that you're not as experienced as you thought you were. You get put in a situation where you, um, you don't have the, the resources to know how the experience to succeed in that situation and something happens, right? Um, uh, and, then, and then, you know, the amazing thing is, you know, the redemption side of the story is that you, on the other side of it, you go, oh, you know, and then you, you're on a path to continuously learning. Like, I, I learn every single day. Right. I'll, I'll learn something today. You know, I'm, every single day there's something that you do that, you, that you're always learning. I, don't, I think that there's always, you know, um, there's no shame in, you know, uh, Michael W. Smith's uh, engineer was right next to me and, and taking a second and listening to what he's doing. Just, hey, right. cool. Hey, that's you know, new, hey, yeah. man. And then, you know, like, uh, and he was doing it next next to me, you know, and like, and we're, we're just, you know, there's no pride in, in, in those kind of things where you just kind of go, oh, so how are you doing? Are we using these kind of mics? Oh, you micing it like that? Oh, that's different. Right. Cool. Hey, thanks so much for watching Backstage Access with uh, Harold Rubens here on set. On We're in Kingdom Bound, Darien Lake. For more information, follow him on Twitter. Continue to stay connected with us, Back TV, and we'll grow together. All right, thanks so much, Harold. All right, bye-bye.